Got another batch of questions on the alkenes you can use to test yourself with. So the link to the questions is in the description of the video. Just click on that, try the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so question one, what's the molecular formula of compound A? So the way I work it out is I'd say if it was saturated, it would have seven carbons and 16 hydrogens, CNH2 n plus two. We've got one double bond and we've got one ring. So we take two carbons off of the double bond, two for the ring, so four in total, takes us down to C7H12. Or you can count, obviously, the hydrogens on each carbon. Part B now, we've got to complete the flow chart. So obviously the double bond's going to react with the bromine, the hydrogen with the nickel catalyst and the H2O. So bromine first, obviously the bromine, the two bromine atoms are add across the double bond where that is, so that'll sort of break open and the BRs go across it. Likewise for the hydrogen, so we'll get that compound there. For the H2O, I always think of it as HOH, so you could put the OH there and the H there, or the OH there and the H there. The essential conditions for this reaction here the H2O has got to be in its steam form, so you could put steam, H2O, gaseous. Temperature greater than 100 degrees C would be fine as well. And you need a strong acid catalyst, or you could specify the catalyst as either H3PO4 or H2SO4. The mechanism for the reaction of compound A with bromine is electrophilic addition. I've highlighted that L because I often see a double L there in students' answers, so it's only a single L there. Question two, part A, we've got to draw a label diagram to show the formation of a pi bond. I've just written up there what a pi bond or how it forms. It's formed by the side-to-side -side overlap of two p orbitals. Didn't need to write that for the answer. It was purely the diagram, but I would always just keep that in the back of your mind. So I've drawn the sigma framework between the two carbons. You don't need to label those sigma bonds up, but I would always encourage students to do that. And then put your p orbitals on, so one p orbital on each carbon. Remember there's an upper lobe and a lower lobe. They're going to overlap side to side and create this region of space above and below the carbons, and that's your pi bond. Part B now, we've got to define the term homologous series. So there's two things we have to say. First bit, compounds with the same functional group, or you could say same properties or same reactions. And then you've got to say the each successive member differs by a CH2. Next part, what's the general formula of the homologous series that allyl bromide is a member of? So it's a halogenoalkene. So all I would do is just look at how many carbons, hydrogens, and there's a bromine in there as well. So it was CNH2N minus 1 Br. Systematic name for allyl bromide, technically it is 3-bromoprotonine and that's because the CC double bond has a higher priority than halogen. So when it comes into um, sort of naming organic molecules with more than one functional group, we have to adopt the priority system. That's not tested at A-level, so that is the answer. You could have said 1-bromoprotonine. Question three, we've got another flow chart of reactions. We've got to identify reagent A, so look at what's happened. Double bonds opened up and we've got Cl and Cl on each carbon. So reagent A is obviously chlorine. Ci, well, we've already seen this question. State the reagents and conditions for reaction R. So reaction R is the reaction of an alkene to form a mixture of two alcohols. So that's your steam or your H2O gaseous a year greater than 100 degrees C temperature, strong acid catalyst, sulfuric or phosphoric acid. Another definition, structural isomers, only one mark for this. Same molecular formula, different structural formula. Next part of the question, draw the two structural isomers of C5H12O that are formed in reaction R. Remember it says these are both alcohols. Um, so there's the original alkene. There's my H2O, but I'm thinking of it as HOH, so I could put the OH there and the H there, and that would give us that isomer, or I could put the H there and the OH there, and that would give us that structural isomer. And then the last bit of the question suggests why 2-methylbutuene is less soluble in water than either of the structural isomers formed. Well, 2-methylbutuene doesn't contain OH groups, so it can't form hydrogen bonds with water, or you could say the reverse, the products, so these are alcohols, they do contain OH groups, so they can form hydrogen bonds with water. Question four is 
um, an example of that electrophilic addition mechanism. So it's for the reaction between bromine and cyclohexane. So I've highlighted all the sort of things that the examiner is looking for and where the marks are scored. So we need the dipole across the bromine molecule, slightly positive closest to the double bond, obviously slightly negative on the other bromine. Pair of electrons, so curly arrow comes from ideally the middle of the double bond. It's got to come from the bond, so middle of the double bond to that delta positive bromine. Pair of electrons repelled onto the bottom bromine. So curly arrow starts from the middle of the bond onto the bottom bromine. And that's heterolytic fission, remember. Sometimes they do ask what type of bond fission occurs. So we'll look at the carbocation intermediate now. So you'll see I've put the bromine on that carbon. Um, which means that carbon's got its positive charge. So they'll be looking for the structure of your carbocation intermediate. The bromine that's broken off by heterolytic fission becomes a Br- ion. Show the pair of electrons so you can take the curly arrow from the pair of electrons onto the C+, and obviously the uh, correct structure for the final product. And finally, question five, the letters of the two hydrocarbons are the structural isomers of each other. So there's a couple of options you could have. D and I, they're structural isomers. Um, F and G are, you could say F and H. What you can't say is G and H because they're stereoisomers. So you've got the, um, the E form there and the Z form of butuene. They're not structural isomers, they're stereoisomers.